they shut down that service. All right, and with that in mind, let's jump over to our man Tim Ord. Folks, my dad talks to Tim every Tuesday, Thursday at this time. And don't forget, you can always jump on over to the front page of TFNN.com. You head on over to the services tab and you will find under that services tab, two great webinars Tim's put together, the secret science of market tops. You have the secret seat. The six secret ratios every trader should know, those are always available right there on the services tab, whether you have Tiger Dollars or not. Haven't talked to Tim in a little while, but looking forward to it. Tim Ward, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Tommy. How you doing? I'm doing so, fantastic, I'm, man. Always good to oh, hear your good. voice. Uh, I'm oh. always listening, usually, if I have the time, which I usually do on my dad's program, Tim. So I'm familiar with the breakdown, man. I got your seven charts. I know you like to get right into it, man. I love the discussion of some of these ratios you have. And where do you want to kick things off? We going to chart one or, well, or some? Yeah, we, we can uh, chart one. Um, this We're actually going to we'll start at the bigger picture. I, I keep reviewing this chart, and everybody's probably getting tired of hearing it. But you got to remind people, you got to look at the bigger picture, then you look at the little bit smaller picture, then you look at the turn, current time frame. So the this nice. the big picture we're going to look at is the NYSE summation index, and this chart goes back to looks like about 2007. And I mark the times uh, to really get a bottom. You need a selling climax, and after a selling climax, you need a buying climax. And there's a lot of different climaxes. You can do a, a volume climax. You can do a, a advanced decline uh, climax. Uh, you can. There's, there's a lot of different ones. This one happens to be more or less advanced decline because summation index is basically um, uh, a kind of advanced decline indicator. But anyhow, to get a climax out of this indicator, you need a, a reading below minus 700. And I mark the times going back to uh, 2007. Uh, the, the top chart is the summation index, NYSE uh, summation index. And I put a red line there. At the lower part there is there's a 700, and I marked all the times. When minus 700 has been reached, it can go lower, but at least minus 700 is reached, you're into a selling climax period. And so all those times going back is minus 700. And the bottom window is the uh, SPX. So the blue lines are the selling climaxes. Then right after a selling climax, you need a buying climax, preferably within two months. That's ideally, you know, so if you push out three months, it can still work. But you get out six months, that's just too far out. But on October 27th, we got a reading, I think it's minus, 806, or minus 813 on October 27th. So ideally, to get a buying climax, which would confirm the bottom's in, it would be a reading above 1,000 on December 27th. Well, we did hit above 1,000 on December 27th. So that marked that this indicator suggests you made an intermediate term low. Uh, so if you look back in time, you know, they all came at major lows. That's the bottom window. The blue line is the selling climax. The, buy, the red line is the buying climax. And most of those times, those rallies lasted, uh, you know, a year or even longer. Um, and we, last time we had, we had one in 2022, and now we got one in, in 2023. Uh, so that predicts 2024, in other words, predicts the next 12 months in general will be up. So 2024, according to this indicator, should be an up year. So that's, that's the bigger picture. So let's flip to, uh, chart two. So we're going to kind of narrow it down a little bit. Um, okay, I like it. I'm with you, man. Um, we're just jumping along. Pretty interesting. Um, some of those, boy, you look at those charts, chart one. Yeah, I know why you're bringing it up often. Pretty powerful chart. Um, but okay, I got chart two up there. We're ready. All right. So so chart two says oh, this year is supposed to be up. This is a kind of a, uh, the pattern it looks like it's forming to me. I did a Fibonacci from the uh, March 2000. 20 low up to the high of 2022, the market uh, retraced 50%. And so a 50% retracement, in other words, a lot of times is the halfway point of the move up. Uh, but also, I think what's forming here, uh, we covered this uh, chart on past two on the Tom show, so bear with me. But we'll get to the short term after this chart. But you know, the, the chart forming here, I think, is the head and shoulders bottom which is the right shoulder, formed in uh, early 2022. 
Uh, the bottom came in October of 2022. The right shoulder formed in October of, of 2023, and we had a sign of strength through the neckline. So this potential head and shoulders bottom has an upside target around 5,700 area. Uh, we've got support now around 4,600, which I call where the neckline is. And um, so the worst case scenario, I guess, is 4,600. Um, upside projection is 5,700, which is give or take 20% higher. So next year, last year was over 23% uh, from uh, the return for 2023. This year probably uh, may match that or has come close to matching that. So anyhow, I think a head and shoulder bottom is forming here, and we're on our way to 5,700 over the next 12 or so months. So let's can I ask to, you, Tim, uh, 5,700, where does that, where does that 5,700 projection come in from? Is that from the head and shoulders, or can I, where, I'm just curious where that price, where you get that expansion up to 5,700? All right, I took the bottom of the head yep. and, and then and measured that to the neckline. Then I okay. took that I measurement you. and added on to the Perfect. neckline. Awesome. Which I got is 700. You. I could awesome. have also took uh, the, um, you know, from the uh, 2020 low, uh, yep. took that measurement up to the top of, of January 2022 and added on, on that to the October low because uh, cool. a lot of times the same area retracement is halfway point of the move. I don't know what that retracement would have been, but probably a close to 5,700 or better yeah, or up in that close. range. Pretty cool. So okay. I, I probably should have done that to see what it is. But uh, Yeah, it's pretty close. Enough. If you tie like an A to B leg from the low up to the high of 4,800 and then you get the 50% retracement, you're talking about a leg of what? 2,600, 2,600? Yeah, I guess that's a little higher. Uh, okay, yes, this sir. is perfect. We're going to take a quick break, Tim. All right, we're only through two charts, folks. We got at least five to go. Stay tuned. We'll be coming back with our man, Tim Ward, right after the break. Don't go away. Welcome back. Tommy O'Brien filling in for Tom. We got our man, Tim Ward, on the phone. We got the markets right now. Quick check in. S&P is off by about 28 points right now. All the markets in the red. All right, Tim, where are we going to next? Is it Actually, three? I just did that retracement. You're talking about that uh, March uh, uh, 2020 low, doing ABC up. Comes sure. out around 6,100, which is about 400 points higher than than the head and shoulders bottom. So we'll see. Uh, but anyhow, um, you know what is wild, too, Tim? Before we get because they, I feel like they're almost everywhere right now. If you take the the low that we got, because I was just looking at this one, and it matches up, and this is the one in my head. I thought that it matched up when you mentioned it. If you take the low back there of 3502 in October of 2022, you run that up to 4600 in July of 2023. That if that's an A to B, though, that one is going to be 1,100 points or so, and that's bringing you up to almost 5,300. So it's amazing how many ABCs, basically, um, anyway, are in that market. I was looking at that one as well. But go ahead. Yeah, Sorry to interrupt. It, all right. So anyhow, I'm I just curious. But anyhow, let's flip to chart three. Okay. Okay. So now we're breaking down to the smaller time frame. So uh, this is uh, weekly. And what, what, let's see, the bottom window is the VIX. And normally when the VIX is below 17, a lot of times the market's kind of in a trending mode. And um, and when, when I printed this chart, it was uh, 13 and a half or something like that. The next chart up, or the next window up, is the SPX VIX ratio. This is a weekly time frame. Uh, so you kind of look and still at the, not a big, huge picture, but a bigger picture. And what I what's noticeable on this chart when the SPs are making higher highs and this ratio is making hor uh, lower highs, you're at a, uh, some sort of intermediate term top. And all that pink area, I noted, when the SPs are making higher highs and that ratio is making lower highs, you're at a top. You're at a. You're going into an intermediate term top. And uh, so, but why? So right now, so the SPs have have made higher highs, and this ratio has also made higher highs. So that's a bullish. Uh, um, it's a confirmation of an uptrend, I guess you might say. So right okay. now, there's no negative divergence, I guess you might say. So nice. uh, everything looks fine. Um, uh, so it should actually, uh, on an intermediate term basis, this looks actually pretty good. So let's flip to the short term, see what's going on. 
Okay. So that, that would be chart four. So intermediate term, on the weekly time frames, you look fine. Uh, monthly time frames, you look fine. Now, this is on a daily time frame. And okay. so this is the same ratio. The, the bottom window is the SPY. Is the next um, window up is the SPX VIX ratio. If you notice, over since um, mid-December, this ratio is, has made lower highs, not much, but lower highs, as the SP has made higher highs. Okay. So that's the divergence, but it's on a daily time frame, not on a weekly or anything. It does suggest that we can get some sort of a, uh, you know, we're in a consolidation phase, I guess. Is it a major top? No, but uh, I'm thinking at the moment, anyhow, well, let's see, today is uh, Tuesday, Friday. The last Thursday's low, we had a high-volume day. And I think at a minimum, we're going to at least test that, and that's around uh, 4,700 uh, or 40, uh, 470 on the SPY. I think it's actually 472. Uh, depends how that low is tested. The last 30s low is tested. If it's tested on lighter volume, that'll be a bullish sign. And if I get some of these ratios that pop, uh, that show a positive divergence. I could end up with a buy signal. If we test that low last Thursday in higher volume, then we're probably going to go back all the way uh, to the uh, be the January low, which is, um, I think, 40. Yeah, January low is about 466, 467, down in that range. And uh, I'll have to see what goes on there. So it's just a minor divergence. Um, we're kind of out of the market right now. And we're waiting for some sort of a bullish setup. So I'm kind of watching carefully. How do you know that this is not going to be like a great big smash? Well, I can tell you why. Because is this show up? Because chart five. Okay. Let's flip to chart five. We're up this there. This is the reason why we're not going to get a big smash. The okay. top window is the ten day trend um, of the. If it was just a 10-day trend, it's 10 days added up, and you take the average of it. And panic only forms at bottoms. If you don't get panic, you don't have a bottom. If you look over the last five days, not counting today, but just the last five days, every day is closed above 1.3 on the uh, trend. Anything above 1.2, you're showing panic. And today is probably going to be day number six, because as uh, we're trading right now, i got a trend of 1.86. So, you know, you got five days in a row above 1.3. You get a 10-day average, comes in at 1.23. So you're already showing panic right now. Uh, and, and, pan and the trend is basically it's a, it's a volume uh, and advanced decline type indicator. So it takes in quite a bit of information, and it shows anything above 1.2, you're getting panic. And, that, and the longer you have panic, the more intermediate term bullish that sign is. So we're not going to, we're basically kind of crashing internally right now, even though the market hasn't moved much. Um, so we're not looking for a market that's going to go down five, six, seven percent. You know, maybe another couple of percent, maybe at most, maybe we just test Thursday's low and that's it, not for sure. But we already have panic. So, so I'm looking for a bicycle in this region. And uh, so, and will I get it this week? You know, you know maybe as early as tomorrow, uh, maybe at very latest next week, but probably within the next four or five days, I'll get a, a signal, and most likely it's going to be a bullish signal. So nice. that's the reason why um, I don't think we're going to go down big because we already got panic in the market. So, nice. uh, we can go like on. It, uh, in we're going to put the gold I, on next one. That's perfect. We, we got a question in the Tiger. We got a question in the Tiger. Um, well, I like the... When, when you look at the SPY VIX, uh, Tim, because it is interesting, I noticed on my show, which I do at 9 o'clock in the morning this morning, that we got a little bit of a spike in the VIX to like a 14 handle, all things considered. Yeah. That was the highest level we had seen, you know, ballparking. We had a couple spikes. January 5th, you were up there, and your charts show it, you know, and that's what was making me think about it, December 21st. But pretty remarkable that that's actually the highest level we've seen in the VIX going back basically two months ago, November 16th. And that's when you really got the acceleration from October 27th. All that volatility gets sucked out. And we've been below 14 since November 15th. But something is making that spike right now, even though we've had some volatility in prior, prior runs. Um, 
So, and that's probably that's what's right. showing up to some degree, right? At least in the shorter term on some of those ratios that you're bringing up. Right. That's actually a good point. You know, I have an indicator on the VIX that shows acceleration. So if the VIX is actually kind of climbing up slowly, that's usually a death signal for the market. If it's rocking up real quick because it's accelerating, that shows yeah. there's fear in the market. And I, I should have put that, uh, I was thinking about displaying that uh, indicator, and nice. I, I don't have it right in front of me, but it's all right. the we acceleration got that. of the VIX is another form of panic, I'll put it that way. Because we've had plenty so, of days where the S&Ps are down 25, and I feel like the VIX is sitting at 12 and change or barely 13, but something about today, man, we're up by 71 cents, we're pushing 14. Uh, folks, we got a couple more topics to cover. We're going to talk some gold. Tim, hang with us, all right? We got one more break. We'll come back. We'll talk some gold, folks. Stay tuned. We're talking to Tim Ward. We'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps off by 23. We're talking to our man, Tim Ward. Remember, Tim's got a couple great webinars under the services tab at TFNN. You can always reach Tim at his website, ord-oracle.com. That's ord-oracle.com. And we're going to talk a little bit of gold in the final two minutes here. Uh, so I got chart six up here, Tim. Why don't you go for it? All right. The middle window is the uh, uh, premium discount for the Sprout Investment gold trust so it, it measures it's, it's a physical gold trust so you can buy uh, gold through this sprout deal and and okay. uh, what it measures it begins, in a nutshell when it's below minus uh two percent in other words two percent discount from par or for the price of gold your uh, this chart goes back around 2017 you're at an intermediate term low and all the blue lines in that chart show the times when this nice. uh, premium was minus two or below uh, last January second, we were at uh, minus two point three. Today we're at uh, two point three eight. That's a minus. So even though the market really hadn't gone anywhere since January second, actually it's gone a little bit lower. According to intermediate term, we should be building an intermediate term low uh, because of this ratio. So let's flip to chart number seven. Okay, and all I got I'm it thinking up. Is, um, is this is the uh, I think it's the daily chart. Can't quite read it. Uh, I no, think it's, it's a weekly, weekly chart. The GDX. It's a weekly chart. Weekly. The GDX. And all yeah. I think is going to happen here. We're just finding support at the neckline, nice. and you got a two percent discount. So I'm thinking we're we're okay. I so like the next it. Next rally up. You're going you're to find a resistance probably up around the previous highs, up around that 31, 32 range. Um, I think we're going to build a right shoulder. A lot of times, the left shoulders and right shoulders are equal in time, so we could pull around here for another month or two. But I think we're probably, GDX is in the vicinity of a low right here, right now. I like it, man. That gold's always intriguing. Tim, I appreciate it. That was a quick half hour, man. Always good to talk to you, and I look forward to talking to you again. All right. Talk to you Thursday. Thanks a lot. Talk to you Thursday. Sounds great. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, have a great night. Have a safe night. Be safe out there. And uh, I'll see you back here. 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. S&P's off by 21. Look at that gold contract. Off by 20 bucks. But yeah. I hope you enjoyed the hour. We'll see you tomorrow morning, folks. Have a great night.